next about breach management okay first of all we have to assess maternal and fetal conditions okay then what we are doing is we have to choose the patients either we go for elective cesarean section or we go for external cephalic version that is there are many indications and contraindications for all these procedures in case of elective cesarean there are indications like when should we go for elective cesarean section that is all complicated breech pregnancies preeclampsia gdm and all all complicated breech pregnancies contracted pelvis yes there is high chance of head getting trapped behind okay large babies the same thing severe iugi yeah there is i've told you there is high chance of birth asphyxia uh -huh. that is the after coming head get entrapped it even if the obstetrician is an expert the head is trapped the head is left behind the maternal body even at least for a few minutes huh there is high chance of birth asphyxia there is high risk of fetal death also so in severe iugia the fetus cannot take risk it cannot withstand this asphyxia even if the baby survives there are high chance of complications like in future like cerebral palsy then hyperextension of fetal head i have told you the stargazing sign that we notice in this usg it's an indication for like you see yes previous cesarean section there is a scar in this by in this uterine wall breech delivery takes a much 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 higher effort than a normal vertex presentation delivery so there is the mother has to put much strength on it there is high risk of scar rupture if there is a previous cesarean section then there is lack or if there is lack of experienced obstetrician all this management is very cumbersome that is if it is the person is not at all trained well then there is higher risk of birth injuries birth trauma if there is a lack of experienced obstetrician then better go for elective cesarean section then in which are conditions we go for we can go for this vaginal delivery with breech that is ideal for vaginal delivery is average sized fetus with well flexed head which can be seen in ultrasonography if it is a normal pelvis if there are no maternal or fetal indications for cesarean section if there is spontaneous onset of labor we will think we will take it as the nature has decided for vaginal delivery that's and that's why this spontaneous onset of labor like that and also extended breach if there is extended breach then yeah we can go for vaginal let's let's give it a try okay that's it and here with this we are classifying the patients into uh, elective cesarean section and those who have been chosen for external cephalic motion external cephalic motion means we try to rotate the baby and align it into the vertex position see it's like this the rotating it like this with both the hands we rotate it you know, and attain it okay in this position okay that is external cephalic motion and that we do only if more than 36 weeks of gestation and it is a done at the term and only with tocolysis that is we have to relax the maternal abdominal wall maternal uterine wall then only we can is we are able to rotate the baby and correct the breach so after this external cephalic version it can be a successful one and it, it can be an unsuccessful one it can be a failure if it is successful i have made it yes the child is in the vertex position sure we can go for vaginal delivery then what if it is a failure then after the cephalic version there is high chance of rupture of membrane the bag of membrane if there is rupture of membrane if there is a cord prolapse if there is a, um, any issues any maternal or fetal complications if the ctg is showing some problems issues then we can go we have to go for elective cesarean section if it is not then we can if it is still there are possibilities there are chances then we again go for vaginal delivery we keep for vaginal delivery and then we can choose if there are no problems then even then 
then we can go for assisted breach delivery and if there is any problem any issues any complications then we again go for cesarean section but here it is an emergency okay we go for emergency cesarean section this is the flow chart of breach management and next going to the depth that is the assisted breach delivery we are going for this vaginal delivery with breach okay first of all if the baby if the fetus is in the attitude of flexion that is it is a complete breach and i have told you the buttocks along with that the fetus lower limb will also comes first and there is high chance of legs coming out first before this delivery of the buttocks if it is extension that if it is a frank breach the buttocks are out first and the legs are extended and it is attaining this position no so how we have to deliver the legs it is by the pinard's maneuver this pinard's maneuver what we are doing is that with obstetricians to fingers the baby's lower limb is pulled down after the delivery of the buttocks the lower limbs are being pulled down by the obstetrician's hand and it is delivered so one thing we have to keep in mind here is that after the delivery of the buttocks and the legs the baby is being held in femoropelvic grip and pulled down what is femoropelvic grip see this is the femoropelvic grip you have to hold the baby like this femoropelvic grip so next if it is uh, we have delivered the trunk uh, after the buttocks and the lower limbs then comes this upper limb that is the delivery of the shoulder the delivery of the shoulder if it is an extended upper limb if it is an extended upper limb we have to deliver by low sets maneuver low sets maneuver with the femoral pelvic grip pull down the baby or rotate the trunk at 180 degree so that the posterior shoulders comes to anterior arms being pulled down from the vagina then rotate it reverse 180 degree and the other shoulder is delivered this is the thing femoral pelvic grip rotate it with 180 degree and one shoulder is being delivered here one shoulder and the arm is delivered rotate it backwards back to the 180 degree and similarly the other shoulder other arms are delivered that 180 degree flip rotation is known as the slow set maneuver and this posterior shoulder is delivered first that we have to keep in mind okay yes this is the this is the low set maneuver holding it femoral pelvic grip rotating it 180 degree see and this shoulder is being delivered okay that is low set maneuver next about this after coming head what about we have delivered the shoulders that after coming head what about the head head we have got three options but the most favorable one is this piper's forceps which is the safest one piper's forceps is forceps delivery why it is favorable favorable why it is safest means we can have a controlled delivery by putting out the forceps we can create a roomy vagina we can retract the vaginal walls see forceps are being put piper's forceps and by pulling it apart the vagina can be retracted vagina can be made wide open so there is more much space so much easily the head can come out and uh, this is the way we are doing it without touching the fetal trunk because the it is to avoid the touch stimulation which may make the baby take on start on breathing and that will be a mess if the baby starts attempts breathing with the head inside the maternal body so that's why we are hanging the baby with the trunk in a towel and by holding the legs we are we are keeping the baby parallel to the horizontal level okay and this is the piper's forceps method which is the safest method and here we have noted the traction is given at the head and not on the neck see on the head only so there is less chance of injury at the neck and what about the next one it is the morrissey smelly wheat maneuver what is that 
one hand right hand we are choosing we with the right hand one finger we have to keep behind the head of the fetus for flexion other two fingers are hooked over the neck of the shoulder okay with the left hand or the other other hand two fingers of that hand on the malar prominence of the baby of the fetus for flexion let's see what's that see this is the morris smelly wheat maneuver with the one hand usually the right hand one finger we have to give we have to put at this point suboccipit point and push it like this so that the head flexes okay with other two fingers here and the other finger the other side on both sides of the shoulders on both sides of the neck it will pull it back with those fingers we pull it back with the other hand two fingers one finger on this cheekbone in this mala prominence other finger in the other mala prominence and that we pull it like this in this direction so this also helps in flexion of the fetus i let me draw it that is with one hand we are pulling it down like this at this region above the region with this smaller prominence fingers we are pulling it down so this is this is this keeps in the flexion with this fingers it gives the traction at the shoulders this is the morris smelly wheat maneuver okay and next is the last one is the burns marshall maneuver the here baby is hung in its own weight for flexion with traction and the feet is being held and the baby the fetus is swung in an arc towards the mother's abdomen with simultaneous supra pubic pressure for keeping the head of the baby flexed see this is the burns marshall menu the baby initially the baby is hung in the maternal pelvis we are not touching the baby it is very difficult to see that imagine the situation the baby is hanging in its head hung in its own weight but that is for the traction and flexion of the baby's head after that we are catching hold of the legs the feet of the baby it is being swung in an arc swung in an arc see swung in an arc and it is being delivered swung in an arc towards the mother's abdomen here it comes the maternal abdomen that is the burns marshall maneuver simultaneous suprapubic pressure we have to give here so that we have to keep the heads fetal head in flexed and that is about the management of this breech delivery that's all and one more thing is that there is high chance of high risk of birth trauma okay what can be that there are high risk of death during this delivery that's why we call the breech delivery needs um, an expert who is trained well trained in this assisted breech delivery so the causes of death are mainly intracranial hemorrhage that is the head is the most dangerous part and that is the most um, what struggled part that takes more effort to get get out it is stuck in the maternal pelvis so in manipulating that to get it out as soon as possible there are high chance of injury intracranial hemorrhage and there can be skull fractures too during that also there are high risk of high chance of atlanto axial dislocation that then asphyxia i've told you this head is being trapped in this uh, maternal pelvis and then cerebellar injuries herpes palsy then transection of the spinal cord while pulling out the child sternocleidomastoid hematoma that is we are manipulating the child's head more on the neck side on the area of the neck so there is uh, injury to the neck so torticollis and pharyngeal trauma etc these are the chance of, these are the common birth traumas that we face in practice during the delivery of the breech in assisted breech delivery and this is all about this breech presentation in a nutshell i hope it is clear to you okay thank you for watching this video please like share and subscribe